Hey YouTube, what's going on? My name is Matthew King. I run a website called playitloudblog.com and I've been wanting to make this video for a while. I'm a huge, huge Marty Freeman fan and even see here, uh, if you know who Marty Freeman is, I made a little joke about him. He, he's never smiling. He, uh, <laughs> all his YouTube videos and his um, instructional videos, he doesn't seem very happy to be there. I just wanted to put a little fun at that. But anyways, I'm going to make this video just kind of as an introduction to his guitar style as well as to give some other um, more, this is, by the way this is my first YouTube video so I may stutter and stop a little bit, uh, make this YouTube video for other more experienced guitar players so they can get at least a few things because I can easily make a video that's three hours long and I don't want to be sit around YouTube for three hours so let's just get right into it. Alright, a little bit about me, like I said, huge Marty Freeman fan, I run a site called Play It Loud. It's playlabblog.com. Hope you'll go visit. Um, Music for Speeding is one of the only albums I still keep on CD. You know, I'm like most people, I have Spotify and an iPhone with a ton of music on there. But, you know, for some reason, whenever uh, I feel like listening to Marty Freeman or just, uh, you know, Spotify's not working or something, I'll just put on Music for Speeding. It's a great album. Um, excellent album. Um, if you haven't checked it out, please, by all means, go and uh, listen to it. It's on Spotify. I checked it the other day and, uh, you know, I, I can't listen to it as much as I used to, but I still get a lot of enjoyment from listening to that. Um, and another thing I think that qualifies me for being a huge Marty Freeman fan is I actually got one of the first Jackson Kellys that they made specially for him when he joined Megadeth back in, I think it was 89, 90. Um, there was only supposedly 100 made, and unfortunately I had to sell it to pay for some bills, you know, it took times, yada, yada, poor me. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but other than that, my first electric guitar was actually a stock Fender Model Jackson Kelly KE3. You can, I found it at a guitar center where I live. Um, it cost me about 600 bucks. It was one of the biggest purchases I had ever made at the time. And I just love that the sound of the, of the guitar. I, you know, started guitar, wanted to learn Megadeth, Metallica, a bunch of the, you know, great guitar riffs and classics of the time. You know, we've all been there, hopefully. And um, he, he was one of the first guitar players who I just really wanted to dig into because I remember seeing his face on the back of the Rust in Peace CD, just being like, "Man, there's something about this guy. I just I really need to uh, dig in and find out everything I can." And one more I listened to Rust in Peace, and then later his solo stuff. Just man, you know, there's there's just no other guitar player like him I think out there. Um, he's a very very great guitar player, and he's still producing stuff today. Um, you know, I made this um, video around uh, the beginning of September 2014. He just came out with the new album a couple of weeks ago, or maybe a month ago. I'm not sure. Sadly, I haven't listened to it yet. I, you know, supposedly I'm a huge fan. I haven't gone and listened to it. But anyways, enough about all that. I know you want to get to uh, the real nitty gritty, so let's go. All right. I just uh, want to start out with a couple of his nuances. Um, you may have gone around YouTube and already seen a couple of things. I'm just going to recap for a couple people who may not be as familiar with Marty Freeman's guitar style. Um, one thing that he does, and this is a, one thing that catches a lot of people's ears, is that he'll choose notes that are out of key, notice I put that in quotes, and bend into a chord tone. For instance, G sharp will bend a half note to A for any chord that has A in it. And I put in the parentheses, that sharp minor, A7, D, etc. Um, it really depends on how well you know your chords as well as your fretboard. Um, that's something I'm not really going to get into today. That's a huge, huge task. But, um, well, you know, I don't want to intimidate you. It's, it, it takes time, you know, and there's no way to get around it. If you want to be a good guitar player and you want to play like Marty, um, you're going to have to learn the fretboard. And you're going to have to learn, you know, all the, the notes of a lot of chords. And, and you have to learn some music theory, I think. Because once you go into some of these uh, YouTube videos I show you, I mean, he, he doesn't really let up. He'll... He throws uh, music theory terminology at you um, just at will without really filtering it or trying to uh, dumb it down for anybody. But um, back to that example anyways, bending a G sharp into A, you know, just you'll be playing G sharp wherever you, whichever G sharp you choose, and you want to throw that into A, that, uh, that for a brief second that catches the listener's ear, um, to where, like, you know, oh, that doesn't really belong there, because in the note, um, in the chord, I mean, A, A has the notes A, C sharp, and E, C sharp being the major third, E being the perfect fifth, 
and G sharp doesn't belong there. So when you play a G sharp right over A, depending on what chord progression you're playing over, or what song you're wanting to uh, learn or jam over, whatever you know, until you bend that into A, it'll um, really sound jarring. But if you do it quick enough, like Barney does, it it'll, it has a really cool effect. And I went ahead and found on YouTube one of his. Let me get it here. One of his uh, videos here. This is his uh, second second instructional video called Melodic Control. This is just a brief clip from it. This is the solo that he played. Uh, uh, I'm not quite sure where in the video. But anyways, uh, just check this out. Notice how he bends these notes. Okay, that was a really quick little clip. Just want to show that. Let me play it one more time for you, in just in case you didn't get it. Okay, again, focus on the bends. There's a lot going on in there. But those bends are uh, very, very, very unique to his style. Um, a lot of guitar players tend to stay, you know, strictly within their arpeggios or within the key that they're playing in or right over the chords that they're playing. And they won't do something as daring as uh, take a note that's, you know, one and a half steps away or a half step away and bend into it. And I believe at that point he's playing over a D major chord. So, I mean, take a close look at the fretboard um, later after this video. Go check out that, um, that solo. You can see up here there's the... Uh, there's the link. If you just type in Marty Freeman lessons or guitar solos, that'll probably come up too. I'm um, sorry, I don't have a quick notation for you. But yeah, as you can see, and hopefully here, I mean, you know, always use your ear, no matter what. You know, no matter how much I or anybody else goes into theory, I mean, always use your ear. I mean, that's a given. Theory's not a substitute for that, but but he's using a very cool concept that I mean, even if you that's the only thing you take away from this video, that's Something that I believe any guitar player can take and just uh, implement in their own way and make it very, very cool. Because I mean, after all, you're you're just choosing notes to play over, you know, whatever your bass guitar player is playing or whatever your rhythm guitar player is playing or your piano player or whoever. I mean, it, it works across all genres, and um, you know, he uses a metal there, but it can use it can be used anywhere. Anyways, enough about that. Let's see what I have for the next step. Oh, come on now. All right, and yes, this is uh, the the second little blip I have right here. That's a very uh, big, big factor of his guitar style is uh, his use of exotic scales, um, particularly the Japanese Hiro Joshi scale and the Spanish Gypsy scale. Um, you can go on Google, search for Japanese Hiro Joshi scale, and you'll probably find images showing you scale patterns and such. Um, I personally believe it's a waste of time to try and memorize you know, a whole new uh, set of scale patterns. Like, for example, what I do with Japanese Hirojoshi, uh, I meant to do this before I got this uh, started in recording. Sorry, let me get in here. Um, what I like to do is, uh, for instance, uh, the E minor scale. I'll do a switch, <laughs> a quick Google search for that. And you'll see here, um, let's, uh, let me find a good thing here. As you can tell, Google's a great resource. Very, very good resource. Oh, um, okay. Well, no, that's pentatonic. Crap. Sorry. Like I said, I should have gotten this beforehand. Okay, come on. All right, there we go. Um, it, like, okay, this is, first off, just from, you know, this is an E minor scale, like I said. Um, we're talking about the, one of the Japanese scales, the Hirojoji scale. I'm going to give you a quick trick how I remember this scale. It's, it's very, very simple if you already know your uh, minor pentatonics or your minor scales. I hope you do. Um, if not, I highly recommend that after you finish watching this video, go check this out. Um, start practicing it. Learn it. You know, find it in other solos that you like to play, whatever. But anyways, here's the trick. Okay, you, you, hopefully you see the mouse right here. There's the three and the four. And then uh, there's the four right there. And then this other little note right there. Um, I don't want to go into all the terminology, but you can see how that pattern repeats. You know, right here, there's. Let's see, oh, actually, that's not right. Crap. <laughs> oh, well, like I said, that's my fault. But um, let's see. This. Let's see, what, what I do is uh, see that's E, F sharp, G, and then that's B, 
and then right there that's supposed to be a C and you'll see that's the same way up there like I said hope you know your fretboard but uh, what I do is I just think okay I want to play a Japanese scale so I know that it you know I can take this minor pentatonic scale or the minor scale rather and I just remember okay I need to play this note that note that note that note and C is supposed to be there I don't know why they didn't put C there but uh, C is that right yeah C sorry yeah C and then there's uh, there's B again that's yeah that's supposed to be B okay sorry like I said that's my bad but uh, yeah I just uh, try to remember those notes and uh, actually, here, let me just skip ahead. Yeah, this is the Hero Joshi scale right here. E, F sharp, G, B, and C. And um, I, I just noticed after, uh, you know, having learned the minor pentatonic scales and the minor scales that it was just a, 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 little, a really subtle variation of those two scales where, you know, again, it's just five scales, five notes, I mean. And, um, I mean, there's just no reason to learn scale patterns if you can just remember, okay, this is the order of the notes, this is how they're constructed and such. This is where they normally appear in the scale patterns that I already know. Why don't I just remember how they show up there? And um, that's a big thing um, It's with, with his style, of course, like I said. And he uses it all over the place. Uh, not really a lot of uh, his stuff from Rust in Peace or uh, really a lot of his mega stuff, but particularly in his uh, solo album stuff, in his first album, which I took the cover of right here, uh, Dragon Mistress. Um, that song, of course, the, the main theme is composed entirely from the Hirojoshi scale, particularly the D Hirojoshi scale. Um, and you can find a tab for that on Ultimate Guitar, and there's a guitar profile as well. I think that's where I got my guitar profile, where I uh, figured all this stuff out. Um, but yeah, so I hope, hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, just a couple other things about the Hirojoshi scale. Um, because you uh, they they have such limited use, you know you only have five notes here. They can't be used with many chords. Um, and you'll notice if you study Dragon Mistress that uh, when he's in D, like you know, uh, he, he, it works perfectly with D over the a D five power chord because a D five power chord only has the notes D and A in it, and D and A are in D here at Joshi. So say in this case, I wanted to use this over E five an E five power chord, which you know, all of us have played it a million times. Um, this will work perfectly because E5 has E and B in there, and this just works out great. And uh, you know, it's the combination of these notes and uh, the the space between the notes that gives it its character. Again, that's uh, going into theory. I don't want to overload you too much. I feel like I may have overloaded you a little bit too much already with my little um, detour on the minor scale, um, but. And finally, remember, just scales are used to accent chord tones. I mean, you know, you, you pick a scale that has the appropriate chord tones. Like, like you know, like I said, just said in this case, if if you need to play over E5 and you want to use the Hirojoshi scale, you're, you're set. You know, E5 has E and B. This scale has E and B. So there you go. All right, let me make sure I didn't uh, miss anything else here. Okay, we're going to get into substituting various arpeggios in a minute because that's a big thing they like to do. do. You know, playing with Jason Becker and Cofany, they, uh, you know, they, I, I would argue that them and uh, Yngwie Malmsteen really popularized the idea of using uh, uh, sweet picking arpeggios. And we'll go into that a little bit, like I said. Um, another thing is, well, and I'll show you an example from one of his videos. He likes to use a lot of exotic rhythm patterns, like fives and sevens. So, um, you know, in rock lead guitar, the norm is uh, 16th notes, 8th notes. Um, six note patterns, triplets, and such, and uh, and what in one of his uh, um, really popular instructional videos, he goes into uh, fives and sevens, how to use them, it gives you a couple patterns you can practice, and uh, and just using it myself, I'm, I mean it's not easy, but it totally gives it gives your leads a different feel, a very otherworldly feel, and. Uh, Let's see, I don't want to skip ahead. Uh, well, actually, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and show you the stuff about fives and sevens real quick, just to give you a, a, at least a reference for your ear. I'll leave it on there, and we'll come back to that in just a second. Okay, well, let me see. Make sure I'm at the right place. Okay, we just did that one. Okay. All right. He, he's gonna, just going to play a really uh, 
quick little five note pattern. I think it's based around E minor pentatonic. Let's check it out, just for a second. Okay, now we're gonna take that scale and play it five notes down at a time, like so. Okay, let's play that over one more time. Just try to count the notes each time. I mean, it depends, again, on how much experience you've had with lead guitar, how much you know about rhythm, music theory, and such. But just, just know that he's playing a pattern of five notes. And, you know, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so yeah, four. Because everybody plays three and four all the time. I'm like so. Da, 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 da. Yeah, see? Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's, that's a five note pattern. You can't really see it very well up there. That's supposed to be 15, 12, 15, 12, and I believe 14, 12 there. And I apologize if I have that wrong. It's my first video. Keep it right, guys. <laughs> you can uh, give me some angry YouTube videos after I'm, I mean, comments after I'm done. Ugh. <laughs> okay, let me see. But. Anyways, as you can see here, um, if you go on YouTube, search Marty Freeman Guitar Lesson, this will be one of the first things that comes up. Exotic Metal Guitar is the name of the instructional video. You can actually go on uh, Amazon and buy a DVD copy of that if you still have a DVD player um, or have a way to play DVDs. Um, I highly recommend it, especially if you're a huge fan of Marty Freeman. It's an invaluable resource here, um, just going through a lot of these little things, and there's, there's a whole lot, whole lot more. From where that's coming from. Um, all right, let's see what we got next. I believe it was substituting arpeggios, right? Come on now. Okay. All right, yeah, let's just use E minor again. In the chord E minor, the notes are E, G, and B. G being the minor third, B being the perfect fifth. And see, the thing is about music theory and harmony is uh, a, a lot of scales, a lot of chords kind of, um, they overlap each other. You know, one some notes of one chord has some notes of another chord. Like, you know, you'll see here E minor is similar to G major because they both have G and B. And, you know, G and B is up there, E minor, and C. You know, C major has C, E, and G, and E minor has E and G. So, and again, Marty Freeman, he takes advantage of that almost at every opportunity he can because he understands that... Uh, I mean, if you just if you choose to play an E minor arpeggio over E minor, um, it, it's a little bit expected, and it doesn't really add much to what the bass player or what the rhythm guitar player is doing. And so he he might go with a G major arpeggio or a C major arpeggio, or perhaps he could go with a uh, if you, if you want to go a little dark, he could go with a G minor arpeggio. I mean there. It's really up to you, and that's where your own individual style will come out once you start to practice this concept. Um, because, you know, Marty chooses notes his own way through his own influences. You'll have your own influences. You'll have particular sounds that you'll be more attracted to than Marty Freeman will be attracted to and such. I mean, it's just something you got to play around with. But that's the basic concept. It's been around forever. It, it's been in classical music. The idea of substituting chords for each other and uh, kind of uh, bending the rules of harmony to uh, create some really cool sounds to vary things up a little bit. Um, oh yeah, and one other thing I wanted to tell you about once once I got to substituting chord arpeggios is that he loves uh, diminished chord diminished arpeggios. I'm sorry, and I just put an example here: F sharp diminished, F sharp A C. It's diminished because C is a um, it's a diminished fifth away from F sharp. Um, if we want a perfect fifth, it would be C sharp. But if we lower it down a half tone, it would be C. That makes a diminished fifth. You know, again, that's theory. Sorry if you hate theory. I'm throwing that at you. But I mean, if you take the time to learn that, take the time to see like uh, how this will work with. Uh, uh, B5 here, well, that's E minor, I'm sorry, I'm getting throwing more theory at you, but, um, I mean, how about we just go to the next step? <laughs> Again, my first video, sorry for stuttering, and uh, having brain farts like that. Um, let's see, 
let's just go to the next thing. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> what the thing that I was really frustrated with learning guitar was that I mean, they I had plenty of licks to learn, I had plenty of arpeggios to learn, I had plenty of scales I could memorize and do exercises on, but no one really took the time to tell me how to apply this to the chord progressions that I heard people like Marty playing over. You know, how exactly do they take a scale or an arpeggio and apply it to this, to the the core, the solo chord progression um, of Tornado Souls or Hangar 18 or Dragon Mistress, on and on and on. I mean, I could go to his stuff, but I mean, it, it was hard to break it down. So I'm just going to hopefully um, give you some insights that will help you and help you avoid a lot of the trouble that I had. Um, we're not going to go particularly into the solos. I just wanted to give you a couple progressions maybe that you could go and uh, jam over later after you're done with this. I mean, so here's Tornado of Souls. Um, and I almost forgot. I actually pulled up the guitar profiles here. Um, let's see. That's Tibetan Angel. Okay. And you'll, you'll hear uh, all the musical parts here, but try to pay attention to the rhythm guitar, mostly. And I'm going to be uh, giving you the um, the... The yeah, chord symbols as they're playing. So here we go. Okay, B5, G5, E5, F sharp 5, A5, and then back to B5. It starts all over again. And, and unless it's like a really complicated guitar solo, I mean, I mean this one's pretty complicated. You know, you and I both know that. Um, that that chord progression is just going to cycle over and over and over again. That's that's the way guitar solos work in a lot of songs. I mean, it, it's there so that a guy like Marty Freeman can shine, so that he can um, use his lead guitar knowledge and his chops to um, take the song to a whole another level or another place entirely. And um, a lot of people may argue on this. I've encountered some people who are like, "Yes, that's totally how this works. This is how it doesn't work." But the a guy like Marty knows exactly what chords he's going to be playing over. He knows what's going to work really good and what's not going to work as good. He knows when the next chord is coming up. He knows um, what note he should be trying to get to, yada, yada, yada. I mean, these solos just don't fall into place here, guys. I mean, there's a ton of thinking that goes on and a ton of practice and learning um, that comes entirely before the moment that Marty recorded this solo. So, um, I mean, that may be good or bad news to you. It's good news to me because, I mean, we, we can take these uh, guitar profiles as tabs and start learning how he did it and so that we can implement it into our own style. And uh, let me, let's in that example, let me see what I have here. What else I want to go over? Um, I don't have Hangar 18 up here. I, just a quick note. Um, the way Hangar 18's chord progression works is this is supposed to be one measure. Um, Dave Mustaine will play D5, then go to B flat 5, then to B5, back to B flat 5, and then start over back at D. And that's the first uh, three solos, I believe, first three or four solos. I mean, even I forget. I've gone, I've listened to solos a million times. But, you know, I mean, the, that it doesn't stay that way the entire song, of course. Um, like I said, get a guitar profile, check it out, um, break it down. You know, learn as much as you can, and hopefully I felt a little bit. Um, Dragon Mistress, uh, D5 to F5. This is just for the first couple of bars. I didn't want to put the whole thing here because it's kind of a long progression. I guess a little bit more complicated. But, um, I mean, the same, same as the things going on here, like in Tornado of Souls. I mean, in Dragon Mistress, he's just, um, he, he's using um, D5 as a springboard to uh, pick either the Hero Joshi scale or some arpeggios. Or whatever to accent these chords. I mean, there's a, that's pretty much it. You know, he's picking scales and arpeggios that will somehow go with that chord progression. And same thing in, in the song Tibetan Angel. I just put Tibet here for some reason. That's E for one measure, and then D and then A or play the second measure. And actually, I uh, I wanted to show that to you because it's a uh, pretty cool uh, little part. So actually, one of my favorite licks of his. Uh, let me just start it from the well. This is the end, but let me start it from the beginning of this example. E. I went to D. 
A, back to E. Okay, I just, I, I think this is just really, really cool. Um, because like right here, these are double stops. And I've always thought double stops were something that, you know, country guitar players did or just some old rockabilly guys, like, you know, some of Chuck Berry solos. Um, well, actually, a lot of Chuck Berry solos have double stops in them. But he, uh, Marty Freeman just, you know, even by looking at this example and understanding that, hey, this is part of an A, uh, a major bar chord here or arpeggio, whichever way you, you want to look at it. That's part of a D major um, chord here and uh, right here he's messing around with uh, you know there's the uh, the shape for E major and then he uh, there there he is at the uh, open bar chord there that we all know and then he's kind of messing around with it you know that's a really cool line there he goes D to A back to E I mean that's pretty much it you, it's hard to argue with that it's really hard to say like oh you know he He's just brilliant, and he didn't learn theory, and and all this just came together by itself. I mean, that's I just <laughs> it, I never wanted to believe that. Let's see here. Let's in that example. Um, oh yeah, one more thing since we're here, I just wanted to show you too. Uh, you can find this uh, on Ultimate Guitar. I found this. It's Marty Freeman exercises, and I believe they take it from the melodic control instructional video that he does, but. One thing that he does a lot, he does this in Hangar 18, he does this in Tornado of Souls, is uh, he'll pick uh, a little pattern that he plays across two strings and he'll move it up the fretboard or down the fretboard in a linear motion is what we call it. And uh, let's just uh, hear the example and you can uh, see for yourself. All right, there you go. There's a lot of cool stuff in there, you know, more arpeggios, uh, some, uh, you know, some more exercises like that. Uh, you know, like I said, just go check it out. Pretty cool. Let's see. I uh, guess yeah, so we've gone through all that stuff. Okay. And that's a lot of the particulars in there. Uh, hopefully, I won't throw any more theory at you again. Sorry if uh, you you just wanted some really quick tips. Um, you know, this is just kind of how I do things. All right. Um, some solos you should study and learn if you haven't already, of course. Hanger 18 and Tornado of Souls is probably um, two examples of his most famous work. Of course, that's because, you know, he played with Megadeth on the Rust of Pete's album. Classic metal album, you know. And I've listened to it a million times. I love it. And then, um, of course, dive into his solo stuff. Um, like I said, Music for Speeding is on Spotify. And if, and if uh, Dragon Mistress or Scenes is on there, that's two of his other solo albums you can probably find that all on YouTube. Just, you know, dig around, search for it. Uh, put music for speeding in there all by itself because it's really fucking cool. All right, and, when, you know, I've, I've hammered that to death. I've, lots of tabs and guitar profiles can be found in Ultimate Guitar. Um, let's see, I think, yeah, next slide here, I did make a mention of the Rust and Peace tab book. That's the first thing I got, of course, because um, I don't think I bought a copy Guitar Pro for a while. For some weird reason, if you haven't already, I highly recommend you go and do that uh, just as soon as you can. It's a great piece of software, and it'll, you know, like we've seen here, show you all these concepts happening in real time, and it's an invaluable resource that we're really lucky to have in this day and age. Um, I already mentioned his instructional videos: Exotic Metal Guitar by Hot Licks, a lot of control. Um, you can actually find piece, bits and pieces, if not all of these. On YouTube, that's in here. Search YouTube, and this is a link to uh, an article I wrote on my website. I would greatly appreciate it if you go check that out and give it a like. Um, see playloudblog.com. It's all guitar scales, how to play Spanish guitar. Um, I go into more examples on the Spanish Gypsy scale, the Hero Joshi scale, and I believe one or two more. I can't remember off the top of my head. Now, I'm very detailed, as you've seen that I do in this video. I Hopefully, I've convinced you that I genuinely want to help, that I know a lot about Marty Freeman. Um, you know, I'm kind of too chicken right now to show examples of myself playing it, because of course I'm not perfect, but you know, we're all here to learn. And uh, I just, actually, when I was making all this material for you, I noticed that there uh, were a couple new videos from Guitar World. I put a link there um, if you want to check that all out. Actually, I should put these links all in the description. Um, 
Uh, hopefully that'll all be in there. If I didn't put that, I'm sorry. Just remind me in the comments and I'll put it in there. Um, a lot of cool stuff in there about how he plays arpeggios without sweep picking, which is a very big part of his style too, by the way. Um, you know, because of his affiliation with Jason Becker, he, a lot of people think he's like a sweep picking like maestro. Um, I mean, he's really good at it. He's really, really good at it, but he tends to just want to, you know, pick each individual note instead of sweep picking all, all those arpeggios one at a time. I just playing um, again the tornado of souls solo is a perfect example um, when it goes into the uh, the really um, into the build up to that crazy lick that he ends that solo with just go check it out let's see I think it's everything for that um, yeah still want more um, like I said I really appreciate you guys staying with me um, I actually uh, sell guitar ebooks that I've written um, all, all by myself uh, they're extremely high quality um, I do not pull any punches as you've seen with this video and I, I just share even more. I go into even more detail about all this stuff. Um, it's much better organized. That's kind of the reason I don't like doing videos as much is because I, I know I rant and that uh, you know I should be writing a lot of stuff down for you. And it's kind of inconvenient to sit here for several minutes and listen to me talk. So that's why I wanted to create my product here, Hell Raising, Hell Raising Lead Guitar. And I have a whole ebook on just Marty Freeman. It's around 30 pages long. Um, you know, lots of guitar tab examples. Um, I highlight and put in bold all the little nuances that I'm trying to teach you and such. And you can find that at shop.playitloudblog.com. And uh, if you join my email list, uh, there should be a discount code sent to you after you join. If you want to save a little bit of money, you know, I have no problem giving you guys a discount. You know, I just appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> you uh, chill out with me today and uh, learn a little bit about Mari. All right, well, I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions, just feel free to uh, leave me a comment. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.